man. So, hey, dog. The WNBA is like crazy as it's been developing this year. So the number one team in the league is the back-to-back -back champions, the Las Vegas Aces. They got Age Wilson on the team, Chelsea Gray, Plum, Jackie Young. They got some goddamn ballers on their team, but they raw as hell. So the Las Vegas Aces have been receiving so much support for a good amount of time. People surrounding that organization have been trying to show them as much love as possible, but the WNBA is like, no, we got to chill out because it's an unfair advantage. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with the charter playing controversy in the WNBA. Some teams can afford it, others can't. Aces have been a team that can afford it, but up until Caitlin Clark came into the league, they weren't able to go ahead and fly shit. Caden Clark came, that shit changed. So with that being said, now the W is thinking of things open up. We can show love to our players because we are making a transition in this league and things of that sort. So you have the city of Las Vegas that decided that they want to go ahead and do something special for the ladies. Hey everybody, I'm here with leaders around Las Vegas and members of our board at the LVCVA. The Aces have been on a historic run, two-time world champions. Um, we're here to do something historic with them too. So come on in, let's take a look. Today we want to do something that is uh, new, uh, something I don't think anybody's ever done before. Um, and we want to recognize you individually. Um, we want to put some money in your pockets. Um, so, <laughs> so we've got an offer for you. Um, we think it's a great offer for us. <laughs> uh, we think it's a great offer for us. We hope you think it's a great offer for you. Um, but we would like to offer each of you individually um, a sponsorship for this year in the amount of $100,000. The offer is really simple. We want you to just play. We want you to keep repping Las Vegas. And if you go to three peat, that'll be icing on the cake. So, that's it. One other thing, I just want to let you guys know, we have talked to everyone in your age. Oh, yeah. yeah. Proud of you. One, two, three. Okay, so when I seen that, I'm like, man, that's dope because a lot of these checks don't make over 100K. You feel me? Some of them makes just barely over that amount. So to get that extra 100K is a huge thing, a huge thing. I think Asia Wilson's contract is uh, uh, maybe a little bit over 200K. Yeah, Asia's deal was 241 in 2023, 249 in 2024. So that 100K is well <laughs> appreciated even from their biggest star. But after that announcement, the WNBA has opened an investigation into the $100,000 bonus payments to each Las Vegas Aces player. Multiple sources with direct knowledge tell the next two. Now, that's a weird way to frame shit. It's not a bonus payment. It's a sponsorship. Reason being is because they're in Las Vegas. It's an attraction to go ahead and see this team that's amazing play, you know? So since the city's going to be promoting this team, Blah J, Blah J, say, come see the Aces. That's promotion. The city makes more money off the team, so why can't the city go ahead and sponsor the team? The same thing happens in other sports. That's why people love to come and play in Miami. They love to go play in, in um, Los Angeles. You play in bigger markets. If your team is good enough, you have local endorsements that you easily get. So I'm saying if a car dealership or whatever wanted to go ahead and give these players endorsements, they can't accept them? For what fucking reason? That, that sounds crazy as hell to me. All right. All right, so Reagan Gomez, I don't know if y'all remember Reagan Gomez, but she's a, a child actor and a voice actor. But she says, didn't Don, Don Staley say, that WNBA has been held back on purpose by WNBA higher ups for decades. Hmm. But here goes Aja Wilson response. She says, um, find out that your team's under investigation right after a game is OD. Like, huh? What happened to growing the game? I don't know, bro. I don't get it. They like, we don't touch something. We want to be able to touch some of that money. Since we can't touch some of the money, it's a problem. Chelsea Gray says under investigation is crazy. So Sydney Colson, she's also on the team. She says, my teammates are here talking spicy. I say I'm the only one with any kind of filter shaking my head. Sydney, Sydney don't have no damn filter. Sydney don't got no damn filter. <laughs> like Asia King with one of her sponsors called The Bump Box says, thank you for letting me give my teammates with custom speakers. And Sydney responds saying, you had me at bumping boxes. For those that don't know, she's referring to scissoring, bumping coochies. No filter. <laughs> Did you all have to speak with, um, you know, the WNBA at all about this? Was this something that, you know, you guys spoke to them and then you spoke to the agents, then you spoke to the aces. And then now here we are with making this grand announcement that has so many people excited about this because women's sports are finally 
being invested in? No, we did not speak to the WNBA. Um, didn't see any particular reason that we needed to. Um, obviously, athletes get sponsored all the time. Um, and we, you know, it's just a sponsorship deal. Um, so um, we, we didn't see the need uh, to talk to the WNBA about that. We wanted, we wanted to, to move on this quickly. Um, we thought um, originally that we would make the announcement uh, at today's game um, that was televised, um, but felt like it was a, a better opportunity to um, have a conversation with the players after practice yesterday. Okay, this person says basically Aces and everybody that supports them has long money, especially the city of Vegas. So WNBA feel threatened because that's going to apply heavy pressure for other team owners because they're not spoiling or supporting on the scale like Aces supporters are. Alicia Clark, she says, she says, can we investigate Kathy and her decisions on who is allowed to charter and who isn't? Now, remember what I told y'all before, before they weren't allowed to charter, especially the Aces. As y'all see, they got the bread to do what they need to. But, <laughs> but since Caitlin Clark came into the league, things have changed. Asia response saying, not you being spicy. So this is the type of discourse that's going on about Caitlin Clark, you know. People are saying that Caitlin Clark, who is? Ooh, she's coming in with a lot of attention. The league has to do their best to go ahead and accommodate her in front of millions. So people will want to stay and continue watching the league. But in the first couple games, man, Caitlin Clark has had a couple of rough, rough games. One game, 10 turnovers. Another game, I believe, eight turnovers. They setting hard ass screens and shit. They ain't taking it easy on her. So Jeff Teague said this right here. Look, mm -hmm. the WNBA is playing this all wrong. Mm. I'm about to tell y'all, this shit supposed to be, my dad even said to me today, it's supposed to be like WWE. Y'all used to be supposed to play hard against her, but y'all supposed to let her kill. Because uh, when she, if she start having bad games and it don't look like it's supposed to look like what we just seen from college and how we so excited about her coming to the league and changing it and she don't kill like that, it's going to like bring it back down to reality. Like, uh, like the great white hope ain't got that much hope. Like, and you know what's funny? You know what I mean? <clears throat> like, To piggyback on that point, I've been seeing a lot of people giving her genuine respect. Like you see Don Staley in a press conference saying, hey, Shout out to her. She's holding it down for us. We need to push her more. Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of hate, like, say, yeah, yeah, go her. But it ain't like, oh, we want her to do good. Yeah. So like they want the, to build her up to fall. Yeah. But it's crazy yeah. because that is not in the W's best interest. Nah, because if so you want the WNBA to really write a script for Kaylin Clark. No, I'm not saying that as your, as a smart person. Look, y'all don't have charter flights. She damn near about to get y'all charter flights. Yeah, they just Because she's so famous, they can't. Mm hmm she damn near get charter flights. All this stuff that they want and need, more money, all this, new teams getting added, all this. When she come, you got to protect that at all costs. So you want them to let her win? Not let her win. But the <laughs> fact, the <laughs> fact, is, like, play the game. But play the game within the game. Like, y'all notice the cash cow right here. Like, everything is changing. If she having a good year, if she averaged 22, and people were like, hey, Kaylin Clark really that deal. The league just gonna get bigger, bigger, bigger. Give her four years to be that. And, and then, then all right, now everybody lit. We we up, new contracts, everything. Now let's dog her. He has a point, but the players, they got too much pride to do that shit. I think even in the NBA, I think people, they just have too much pride to do that shit because they want to be the guy. Individual dudes want to be the guy because everyone fighting for their own damn contract and stuff and they want the endorsement deals. They want to make their face be bigger. So they taking her as an opportunity since the eyes are on her. Shit, you're going to see me now and I'm going to ball out on her. And um, it's crazy when I hear things like Great White Hope because even when it comes down to it, two players that cooked it this past weekend was Sabrina Ionescu, Ionescu and Brianna Stewart. Like, Stewie's the one who crushed the ass on that screen. So the other white chicks out there like, she, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a problem too. I'm a problem too. And we can steal some of that shine. Maybe they stay watch for us. W got a lot of white chicks that's ballers, bro. Now, in response to what Jeff T says, Jamil Hill says, this is quite possibly one of the stupidest arguments I've ever heard. And I truly enjoyed this podcast. When Magic and Bird came to the NBA in 1979 and the league had games on tape delay do you think the other players in the league thought you know what we just take it easy on bird and magic so we can better position our game absolutely not this would never be said about men's professional players on or men's league women don't need to be coddled and certainly not infantilized candace parker lisa leslie maya moore 
Age Wilson, Brianna Stewart, Diana Taurasi, they all had to earn it. Any player who is trying to be great doesn't want to be given shit. You would think a former NBA player would understand that. The thing about it is like Jeff T was like a role player. Even though they played it hardest, but still, it's still politics in the league. Some people got more of a whistle than others. Meaning um, they get more foul calls. The refs look out for them more than others. I don't know if it just swayed that way or if they were told to go with and call it that way. Like say for instance, Jamal Murray did that shit early in the series between the, the, the Nuggets and the Wolves, Timberwolves. Jamal Murray should have been suspended the game. But Adam Silver knew that this was going to be the most, most competitive series possible this playoffs. So I'm not suspending Jamal Murray for one game. We're going to give him a hefty fine. So you can make sure we can make sure this shit goes seven. <laughs> Fuck wrong with y'all. We need that bread because this this um, playoffs doesn't have that much re name recognition. So Jokic is a big name. Won the finals last year. We need him in as long as he can, and they got it up to seven. Now Ant Man is seen. He's new face moving forward as of now, and they're happy. I think they're really happy. So things like that is what people do. They control it that way, but to go ahead and, and ask the players or expect for the players to go ahead and take back seat, that shit ain't happening, bro. It may it sound good in logic. It sounds really good, but that shit ain't finna fucking happen. Um, they say they want to see Caden Clark lose so bad. It's obvious this famous loose. Home right here response saying this right here. This is how some of y'all sound when talking about Caden Clark. Looking at the white girl is a foul. Speaking to the white girl is a technical foul. And touching the white girl, <laughs> now that's a legend. <laughs> Game on! There. Foul! Foul! Keep your hand off that white girl! Foul! Uh, come on, man, that's some old bullshit. <laughs> That's a technical foul. Yeah, nah, that's real tough. Basically, how it is, bro. Oh man. So this was the screen I'm referring to. Y'all know I can't show this show on the screen. I'm gonna try to show what I could though. This is the screen they're referring to. So Brianna Stewart set up the screen on her. Boom. That's a basic ass screen, but she got cleaned out. One more time. And damn, the size difference difference between her and Stewie is crazy, bro. That size difference is crazy. But uh yeah, but that's that's the one. Who who this chick is up here? The, that's on her. You see the screen coming. Why you ain't calling that shit out? The person says five things. One, the screen was already sitting there. She folded like a wet napkin napkin. Get in the weight room, keep your head on the swivel, and snap on your teammates for not calling the screen out. Like they you got two teammates it's, it's sitting there staring at the shit. Why y'all not calling that out? <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with y'all? But this is what happens when you have a team that had the number one pick two years in a row. That's what's going on. I don't understand what the hell people thought was going to happen. Caden Clark, Leah Boston, both number one picks. <laughs> they both were number one picks on this team. That means the team sucks. The New York Liberty, one of the best teams in the league. They lost in the damn um, the finals last year to the Las Vegas Aces. So, of course, it's going to be a hard game. What do y'all expect? Like, are y'all just Caitlin Clark fans or fans of fucking sports? Like, this is what I be thinking when people have these conversations. Are y'all fans of fucking sports? Now, I know a lot of people um, a lot of people are fans of sports. They just want to see it do good. But they think, oh, like, what y'all want the players to not play hard? Of course, the players want to embarrass and beat it. Like, like what, what Lowe said earlier, they want to see Caitlin Clark lose so bad. It's obvious. The players, of course, the players that's playing against her want to beat her. She has the big name. It's like, we ain't even come to this league and it's going to be easy. What the fuck you expect these people to do? What, what would y'all do if y'all in these positions as athletes and competitors? Y'all going to try to win. What the hell y'all expect them, man? They said Caitlin Clark driving home after every game. <laughs> yeah, nah, man. She ran into a freaking tank, man. Her teammates have to help echo that screen coming, poor collective communication. But this is Caitlyn right here. Caitlyn, Caitlyn not here. Man, Caitlyn gave her the nice, she she caught this girl a couple times. She caught her with a backhand too. Laid her ass out. So listen, bro, she's gonna adjust. The game is really, really physical. From what I'm saying, as I'm watching more WNBA basketball, it's a very, 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 very physical game, dog. She's going to adjust. She has to cut down the turnovers because she turned the ball over like fucking crazy. I think that's why our coach tried to get her off ball, but the, the other guard just ain't as good as her. She's still the best option, but in the meantime, she turned the ball over. So we're going to see, man. But in the meantime, we got Angel Reese doing commercials with Camila Cardoso saying shit like this. This is the NBA final commercial right here. Tonight, we honor basketball's kings and queens. Champs only. Hell no, nah, that's funny. Champs only. 
champs only. If y'all don't understand the reference, LSU and South Carolina won the last two national championships against Caitlin Clark's Iowa Hawkeyes. So, all right, now one thing that has been developing and very, very interesting, interesting to see that as we all can agree, as far as talent wise on a grand scale, Caitlin Clark up here, Angel Reese right here. Angel Reese, as far as talent wise, is going to be an amazing start in the league, amazing big in the league. Her ceiling is nowhere near as high as Caden Clark's from what we see, okay? But as far as the ambassador, you know, like as a JIT growing up, we used to see Lisa Leslie all the time when it came to marketing WNBA. That is who Angel Reese has assumed herself to be. She's on the stage lit with Glorilla and um, Megna Stallion. She's at a concert as well. So she's making these moves like this. You got Lotto, Lotto pulling up to the game saying I'm here to see Angel Reese and stuff like that. So it's just interesting to see as this dynamic where even she's stepping up for this cause right here. As people have been going back and forth, as you guys see, she stepped out saying, get Nika her visa now. That's referring to Nika Mule. Um, charter flights are here. Give every team the same publicity because it ain't just one team online. Bullying, bullying ain't it at all. And oh, the Chicago Sky are here and on the rise. So the online bullying, who she's referring to is uh, Leah Boston. Leah Boston has been getting a lot of bullying from... Caitlin Clark's fans to the point that she said she had to deactivate her social media or Twitter so she doesn't see it because Caitlin Clark's fans are blaming her for the losses and things of that sort. She had a real tough play recently where when they had a chance to win against, um, who, who were they playing against? I believe the Connecticut Sun. She had a chance to miss. She did a Euro against three people, but came up short when it came to the layup. So she was already getting bullying from that point. That just added on to it. So here goes Angel Reese talking out. It's interesting, but it's necessary. I think it's a necessary between the two. Even as I look back, I don't think she has the same level as far as talent wise, because we see the folks that's done, that's the ones that's coming to the league. You see Caitlin Clark, she's a beast. You see in the future, you're gonna have Juju Watkins coming in. It's some people that just have a whole nother level of talent. But at the same time, you see Angel Reese still, she's trying to take that position as a league ambassador. So as I'm seeing, it feels like what people explained to be when Magic and Bird came into the league with Magic being the more guy with a smile on his face, front face and the X, Y, and Z, where Bird was just trying to handle business and get them W's. It feel like that. It feels like that. But y'all gotta let me know what y'all think, man. So the comment section is yours. Let me know what you gotta say in the comment section below. I'm gonna get up out of here, though. This has been another update with Stace. Yo.